I want to give you 5 reasons why 2022 was a great year for games. In this video I will give my requirements for what constitutes an exceptional gaming year, with examples of games that meet them. Here we go. A good year for games has to have that trademark title, which is a title that everyone remembers the year for. In 2022, we saw the release of Elden Ring, I would say FromSoft's biggest game, surpassing even Dark Souls in popularity. The reason why this is important is because a game like this attracts all sorts of gamers, even ones that typically stay away from that genre. The ones that would potentially enjoy these titles, but have shied away from it, now have a reason to play and discover that they really liked that genre all along. This happened with other trademark titles like Halo 3 and Call of Duty 4, which both, insanely enough, launched in the same year of 2007. Gamers of all sorts flocked to buy a copy, even when they had never really played a game like this, and many became fans of the genre since then. Games like this also attract the attention of non-gamers. I remember being in my room one day, and my mom came up to me to ask me about something. She said something to the effect of, Gabriel, have you heard of this game called Elden Ring? My mom is not a gamer, and so to hear her asking about it was really something. The last game I can remember that she asked about was Fortnite. It doesn't really happen very often, and titles like these generate excitement from all sorts of spears throughout the world, and it's really cool to see when people or websites are talking and referencing something that you always think and talk about with yourself and others. In 2022, we saw the release of many great sequels. We saw the release of God of War 2, Horizon Forbidden West, Xenoblade Chronicles 3, Splatoon 3, and a new Pokemon game and much more, and for the most part, they all lived up to the hype. Sequels can be hit or miss. Fans of the series can be pretty nitpicky and hyperanalyze every new feature or character that's added to their beloved series. I say this from experience because I catch myself getting into that mindset when I play a sequel. That's why it is such an achievement to get a follow-up that delivers, because knowing all the pressure and expectations that certainly that team feels as they're making it must not be easy. Also, it is nice to play a game with a tried and true formula that you know works. It's not realistic to expect every game to be groundbreaking and to rewrite the drawing board completely and personally, I wouldn't want that. However, I still want some games to do that. And that leads me to my next point. 2022 had abundant releases of unique and engaging indie titles. My favorite one was Neon White. It's a fantastic first person puzzle platform shooter with a great story and music. It's the type of game that your Sony's or Activision Blizzards don't make. And so they come from indie publishers. I think this is where the most interesting spaces are in gaming right now. Games like this, that you aren't really sure what they are. They have a hand in several different genres, but come together as a unique package. Also, generally they aren't long games, so that pairs up nicely with these longer 100 plus hour big budget games that seem to take up all your weekends for months. 2022 also saw the release of some really cool new IPs. The one that comes to mind is Ghostwire Tokyo. It's an action horror first person open world game that is set in the Shibuya district of Tokyo. It has a really engaging and atmospheric open world that will scratch your urban fantasy itch if, like me, you haven't played a game like that since Division 2. In contrast to sequels, it's always fun to see developers try new things and put us in new worlds with all new characters and themes. A year that sees only releases from existing series does not make it as fun and exciting of a year. You gotta have both, and having new IP that just hits you out of nowhere and all of a sudden you become invested in this brand new thing is an indication of any great gaming year as far as I'm concerned. Deviating from that last point, but not entirely, is that 2022 saw long and well-established series releasing titles from completely different genres. One of my favorite games of the year was Stranger of Paradise, Final Fantasy Origin. It takes the legendary Final Fantasy 1 and gives it an origin story. The story and the implications are fascinating, but the gameplay is what really shocked me. The game was developed by Team Ninja, known more recently for the Neo series. It has very similar combat to that, and comes with a class-based system using the jobs that Final Fantasy is known for. Games like this are a delightful surprise to be had. To see a franchise that you love and have them try a completely new genre is always interesting. You start to wonder things like, how would these enemies or systems work in a completely different genre? If the new genre is also one that you enjoy, then you get double the excitement and enjoyment if the game is good. If it's not one you enjoy, then what better way to try the genre again with a series that you love already? Seeing games like this add to the quality and health of the year as a whole. So if you have any thoughts on 2022, whether it was good or bad, let me know in the comment section below. My name is Gabriel, and if you like what you saw, then please like and subscribe, and I will see you all next time.